So I've been uh, working on cleaning up the shop here a lot lately. This is time, kind of the time of year when I like to focus a lot on trying to catch up from a year of making stuff for other people. So uh, a couple weeks ago, I went and bought some stuff from a woodworker that passed away locally, it was a friend of a friend. When I brought all that stuff home, I really realized it was time for me to get some cleaning done. So I've gotten a lot of organization done around the shop. I think it's a good time to go ahead and kind of do a once around the shop, kind of show you what we got to work with here at my shop, at my, in my backyard. Um, the CNC is at my dad's house. We'll do a video of that later. He said he's not quite ready to do a walk around. He's still got some organization he's working on. I'm okay with a little bit of chaos, organized chaos, whatever you want to call it. So I'm gonna go ahead and show off what I've got here. A lot of this uh, equipment I've bought secondhand. Uh, all the heavies that I call it, like the table saw, the band saw, and the planer, all of those big heavy pieces of equipment. My dad and I went and bought out a cabinet shop about two years ago in a local area. He had posted on Craigslist he wanted to get rid of the entire shop. So we went up there with cash in hand and attempted to buy just the things that we needed, which are the things that we ended up keeping, but he wanted to get rid of all of it. So we worked out a number and uh, took everything that day, filled up my big equipment trailer with stuff. So a lot of what you'll see in these videos that are our heavies, we did get from that cabinet auction or cabinet shop. And then uh, a lot of the other stuff, you know, just one piece at a time, my dad always told me, you know, don't buy a tool until you need to use it. So a lot of the tools here I've needed uh, for one project or another uh, would either I needed it to complete the job or I needed it to make the job more efficient or quicker. You know, whatever excuse you need to buy a tool, just be sure that you're going to use those tools uh, the first time you get it. Don't try and make up a need for a tool. Just buy tools that you need and that way you end up not running out of funds to purchase tools. So uh, first things here we'll cover the drill press. I got that in the cabinet shop buyout. Um, it's got a pretty shoddy table on it, but for as much as I use the drill press, it works well. Um, it's got adjustable gears and it smells really bad when it runs, so I'm not sure what that means. Um, it runs on 110. Uh, the bandsaw, it was not working when I got it from the cabinet shop. It, uh, the switch was bad and it was not wired up correctly, so I wired it up to 220. It's an old school uh, Rockwell 14 inch bandsaw. Uh, this is kind of one of the original bandsaws that you could buy, uh, or that kind of started into woodworking. Uh, it's got a pulley on the back side of it, so if I were want to, I could buy a different size pulley and I could use it to cut metal with. Here's my table saw. It's a Grizzly cab or hybrid cabinet saw. It's a GO771. And I just put this new fence on it. This is the fence that I got from that um, buyout that I just did a couple weeks ago. Uh, you'll see my planer here. It's a 20 inch shop box. I believe it has a three horsepower motor on it. It's got straight blades, no helical blades. I just can't justify spending the money on that. Uh, you'll see a little bit of the lumber rack. Really, when I add a new shop, I want to completely um, add on to this shop. I want to completely redo the wood rack thing because I've, I've got more wood than I know how to store after it's been dried. So you'll see all the shelving I put in uh, the first day I bought the house before I brought anything in. I did the shelving. So over here with the big blue cover, that's my reloading bench. I also like to uh, reload uh, for my hunting purposes and target shooting. Uh, so that's kind of the reloading section. I try to keep everything covered there because of the amount of dust we create. Got a dust collector. It also runs on 220, table saw is 220, and the planer is 220. And uh, at this point, we'll go ahead and look at the next quarter of the shop. All right, so in this area, this is kind of the, the big open area that typically stays pretty open. I've got a table that I'll put in here, just an old Sterilite tape table that I'll put in here just for for projects for a horizontal surface. Notice over here, I've got my clamp rack, one of my two clamp racks. These are the, the, uh, the squeeze style clamps and then some big seat clamps. Um, right here, I've got pull down power. Uh, I've also got pull down air. So the air tank is, uh, is 
plumbed in for that. Um, got my air tank over here. It's a big 80 gallon or it's a 60 gallon. It's a big 60 gallon. It runs on 220 as well. Behind this sheet stock here, I've got my freezer that I keep all my reloading stuff in. So the freezer does not actually work, but that's fine because all I'm using it for is to, uh, to keep it dry. It's a moisture contained environment. Oh, shop back, freezer for refreshments and overflow for the freezer that's in the garage. Got a sink that has a counter on it that is completely covered in solvents and paint and who knows what. It's good to have a sink like that in your shop that really just doesn't matter what happens to it. Got all my uh, stains here uh, in this rack that I made. Got a little um, takeaway rack that I've got pencils and air tools and paint brushes and stuff like that in. Got a little vise. Got some under cabinet storage here. You notice that I'm a tall guy, so I've made these cabinets quite high, so it makes it easier to uh, work at. And then up top, not sure if you can see that, is where all my long bar clamps are. I've got um, quite a bit, but not really enough to do anything super big project-wise. So for that, we'll go over my dad's house. He's got a big collection of clamps as well. And then just out of view is my spray paint rack that I made. It holds... Uh, uh, probably about 80 cans of spray paint because the thing that I do with all my CNC stuff is I offer painting services usually uh, don't have the right color so we just go ahead and buy whatever color we need so here you'll see my chop saw I saved for about six months with my odd jobs and bought this chop saw two years ago it runs off of 120 or it also will run off the DeWalt 60 volt batteries two of them on a Delta roll around uh, shop site or job site cart works great. And here is just some of the lumber that we've got that, uh, you know, it's just, there's nowhere really else to stack it. So eventually I want to have a table that's going to extend from the center of the shop and come down about where this wood is. This is a little bit better view here of the pile of wood. Most of this is uh, red oak. This is kind of the area that I want to build my table. That's going to act as an outfeed for my table saw. In a perfect world, I would have another shop to put this finished wood in or an area where I could put it, but I just don't have the, the indoor space yet to keep this kiln dry lumber yet. So you'll see my wind dust collector or air, uh, air filtration system got more cabinet space here that's all at a good height I got my air tool slash hand tool holder that I made it holds all of my DeWalt tools minus my uh, DeWalt cordless tools minus my circular saw and my um, reciprocating saw also holds a lot of painters tape and all the nails that I would need for all my air tools um, so go around to see more cabinets over here this has just got a random assortment of things. Um, then I've got my oscillating sander that I just bought from the, um, from the guy that passed away. And then I've got our welder that's my dad and I's uh, Miller 211. Don't use that a whole bunch. Um, I've used it to do modifications to my trailer. And then I've used it to make table legs. I really enjoy welding, but I am not very good at it. So, um, just always interested to try something new and having a welder was definitely something that helped me out on my trailer project. So with that, I think that pretty much covers everything. This was kind of a long one, but I know a lot of people have been kind of interested um, as to the things that we've got around the shop, what kind of tools we have at our disposal. This is something else here that I didn't cover. This is uh, the chainsaw sharpening area. So I've got my chainsaw sharpener that I got from Harbor Freight. You can buy the Oregon version of these for like four or five hundred dollars. And I'm gonna tell you this right here will sharpen a chain. Um, I've never used one of the Oregon ones, but I can't imagine it working much better than this one. I, I went back and forth with the idea of buying the Oregon because it would sharpen a good amount of chains. But the way this one 
worked out. I think I paid like 30 or $40 for it. And it has done everything that I've wanted it to do. Now it's plastic, so it's not super heavy duty, but like I said, it works great. This here is my brake, brake for um, taking the, making the chains the right length that you want. And then here's the chain spinner for putting the new links on. This is great for if you break a chain or if you buy the, the wraps of chain, the big wheels of chain, you can find those somewhere. It's worked out great with my Alaskan Chainsaw Mill. I was able to get chains shortened that I'd found for a good deal that were a little bit too long. And uh, Harbor Freight has these too. I don't think these are Harbor Freight, but at any rate, you spend about 40 or $50 on this and it's just a nice little tool to have. It was one of those that I probably could have justified not having, but I got a good deal on it, so. With that, yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's about it. So if you have any other questions for the shop or anything like that, just uh, feel free to put put a comment down below. And uh, yeah, have a good day.